I want to be a Hampton selectman because? Thank you for that question, and thank you for being here this evening, Attorney Casasa. We want to thank the Hampton Union, Pat Cronin, Nick Reed, for giving this format ahead of time, too. I would like to be considered for this position of one-year selectman to the Board of Selectmen because for the fir last 13 years I've served this town on the Municipal Budget Committee. We go over all the same things year by year, line by line, item by item to pass a budget. But it has its limitations. It can't affect policy. We can affect numbers. We can draw up their budget. We can advise you how to and where to spend your money, but there are times that policies need to be changed to best advantage what you spend in this town. We have a lot of things on the drawing board not done. I'm not going to throw out those words of change and big new ideas. We have a lot of ideas out there already, and we need to push them to completion. I'd like to take everything that I learned in these 13 years working alongside the Board of Selectmen to be, a to be on that board for the next year to try to change some of the policies that are like roadblocks keeping us from going forward. Right now we're at a crossroads in this town. We have seen the beach get new life instilled in it and all of a sudden we are bursting with pride and we're bursting with this newfound development that's going on throughout town. How do we bridle that? How do we go forward in a good way with development? And how do we get that development going forward to take some of the tax burden off our taxpayers? There's a lot there in, in that statement. Um, but there's a lot of work that has already been done. And I would like to be the person to continue it only not no longer on the budget committee, but on the select board. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Latterman. Uh, for Eileen, um, you spent the last uh, 13 consecutive years on the budget committee. What do you see as the biggest challenge in maintaining a stable tax rate? Right now, let me start to answer this this way. The goal is a stable tax rate. I'm not sure that we totally have achieved that yet. When you talk about having your tax rate here, and forgive the Mediterranean background that has to talk with my hands, um, when you talk about a stable tax rate here, that we've cut back, we've trimmed back, we got to within $37,000 of the last budget before a couple of grants kicked in, you're at bare bones. You have things that have to be paid contractually through obligations. As those things continue to rise, to stay here, something has to give here. So here we, was, this is where we want to be. This is where the economy is taking us. So the only thing we can do is take away services in this town. That's the challenge. To stay here and pay these escalating costs, what you need to do is find a new source of revenue. That new source of revenue can come to this town in the name of development but not any kind of development. We need good development. We need development that will give us good jobs in this town, support more of a year-round economy. We need things that will be aesthetically pleasing. There is a lot to this bag, but there is something that we can do. This is going to take coordination by everybody, planning, zoning, selectmen, budget committee. All right, even the committees we have, conservation, to put all of this together. But it's there, and the catalyst that we had was to look at a beautiful beach that is now welcoming everybody once again and saying, okay, Uptown, what can we do up there? This is where the taxes <coughs> are. As development goes forward, everyone is doing better, the trades are doing better, the money is going into the tax roll or there's money going into the tax rolls from the properties that are now coming on board. No one would dispute that in regards to uh, what we will be charging for uh, the brewery, let's say. We've we drilled it ad nauseum 
when we went over the condominium development and what that meant as that it being added to the tax rolls. So it's not the same old, same old Hampton. Hampton's this beautiful little bubble right now about to blow open and it's filled with a lot for everybody in it, but it's only going to happen if we all work together. That takes taking a history and taking workability into the process <coughs> and working closely. Mr. Wardell alluded to it. We do all have to work together. I understand that. I have a 15-member board that more than one person in this state has says, that's a monster. How do you ever have a meeting? Well, you've all tuned into those meetings and know sometimes uh, they go by and large. But when you talk about the taxes and what we can do with that, that's what we can do. There is a solution. Thank you, Ms. Latimer. Thank I want to get Mr. Uh, Pluff an opportunity to have a question. Do any, this is for everyone. Um, do any changes need to be made to the way the trash and recycling is collected in town? And should the town look at a pay-as-you-throw system? I'm going to tell you absolutely not what I look at a pay-as-you-throw, and I'll tell you why now. I have spent, there are those of you in this room and those of you watching at home who know I've spent a tremendous amount of time dealing with the trash and the recycling issue. I was not on the committee who gave us this Warren article, but I have been on the budget committee who has had to live with it. And as such, I have done my best to go out there and research and visit a lot of the possibilities and places that everything can go. It was kind of a process of looking at from the outside in to see what was best for us. In doing that, I visited places like Casseller, I visited places like Eco Maine entirely and spoke to them and to see what they were about. And I brought that information back to the community as information only to be explored by the Board of Selectmen, who has gone on to choose Eco Maine for the process. Along with doing that, I also read all the blanket studies for states like California, Massachusetts, and Maine, where there are communities that have bag and tag. Bag and tag is very successful in homogenous communities. If you had a town like Kensington, it would work very well. It works very well out in the western part of the state of Massachusetts. It fails horribly in every single study in towns like ours where we open our doors to everyone. We pose ourselves out there as a worldwide resort and that's what we get is the world and with it we are not all the same and our visitors for the most part do not care about our trash and in community after community where you did not have that homogeneity you had absolute failure besides that we've already re um, invested close to three million dollars we have a commitment in this system the problems that we're having is should we have commercial trash or not to have commercial trash? Well, I'll tell you going a little bit further because this town grew up the way it did in a non-homogeneous manner with ever-changing zoning laws, with density that you see in city alleys. Not picking up the trash in commercial benches would be a huge mistake. And if you would allow me, I'll tell you why. Just a few seconds because I right. got to get to Mr. Plop, So <laughs> That leaves, if you cease the commercial trash from the town, stand, the town picking it up, that leaves everybody on their own, every man for himself to hire whoever, whatever, whenever. So if you want garbage trucks to be the focus of our town, then go that way. Besides that, our businesses pay a good deal of taxes to this town and they've been operating for a long time with this and it keeps our town clean. That's one of the biggest things that we throw ourselves out there with is how clean our Hampton beaches are, how clean our Hampton town is. If you want to change that, then go ahead and vote to get rid of commercial pickup. All right, and with that, thank, thank you. you, Ms. Latimer. This will be for everyone. Um, I mean, some people have made it the point that uh, the, the state own, owes the town of Hampton and. Um, and, and Hampton needs to receive more for all the services that it provides for the state. How, how do you believe, um, you know, that, that goal could be achieved? Ms. Latimer, do you need to have the question repeated or are you? If you would repeat it so I can answer it. 
Sure. Uh, it was just that, you know, some people have made a point that the state owes something to the town of Hampton for all that it provides, and, and how can um, how can the town hope to, you know, equal that out and, and get what it deserves? That's what I thought. I wanted to hear that owes. Yes, the town, oh. the state does owe, and Selectman Bean did quite a bit of work this year in trying to tabulate exactly what is owed, and unfortunately it's in the millions but the reality of getting that is slim to none unless we forge ahead in the future with better agreements um, memor was it the memorandum of yeah, understanding MOUs. the MOUs <laughs> and we do that in a timely manner I don't believe that either one of us has had much luck forcing the state to do anything but we are cohabitating down there and we do need to find a better operational mechanism to function with because there are things that as we push it back and forth are deteriorating rapidly so yes we do need an MOU that has some teeth in it on, on both sides and an MOU that can be done uh, and done in a way so that it starts at the beginning of a year and doesn't get in place like in November after an, uh, the season is done it really doesn't do us too much good then so yes, we do need to partner with the state. It won't be an easy, an easy road to do that. But as long as we stand on one side saying you should be doing this, and they're standing there saying, yeah, but you should be doing that, we're not getting anywhere. We've had year after year after year not getting anywhere. I don't think the progress will be as fast as we'd like it to be. There are millions owed, but we just keep making it worse by not coming to terms and some understanding that has some teeth in it. As we reach the, um, the sort of halfway mark, I'm going to ask each of the candidates to conclude with a minute or two um, summary. Thank you. Quite a few people have asked me who I stand for. And quite honestly, I had to really think about that and tell you that I stand for the average guy who goes to work every day, who wants a town that's clean, that has facilities for me, as services for me because quite honestly I don't have a lot of extra time in my life and there are a lot of us out there there are a lot of seniors out there too that are continuing to work very close to that section they don't have any time and they're tired and they're not going to do things like bring their trash to the dump they want it picked up curbside and so on and so forth and then I looked at what I'm attached to and I think it's significant to let everybody know I'm attached to nothing other than this town and I mean the whole town in the 13 years I've served you and there's enough footage and and debates and arguments and votes from me in the history of this town that you can just go to channel 22 and pick up to see what I've stood for in those 13 years didn't matter whether I was fighting for the west side of town and the sewerage that they still don't have or the north side of town when it flooded out and I was asking for to be put on a drainage study that it would include my neighbors all the way up the north end on Mill Road even though I didn't have a drop of water in my house or when we were fighting for the pump station in the 11th hour because you know what it was one of those things oops nobody brought it to our attention but we needed it we couldn't run the risk of everybody's toilets down the beach failing especially not in the summertime also fought through the years for the big and the little things all right the times that we needed shippers the times that we needed and some of the bigger things in personnel the times we needed to replace four firefighters fighting now in this budget to have the public vote for you taxpayers vote for this budget so we can add some police boots on the street so we can add a fire inspector We've done those battles through the year not only to fight to have it but why we have it and spend the time to decide okay we'd like to have it but do we need it I fought for the things we needed fought for a police station we have that fought for the fire station in multiple rounds and multiple designs and fought even harder when we said we wanted to do the uptown sex um, fire station in two pieces fought to have that be one if I can look back at a decade and say I fought for a pump station, I fought for fire stations, I fought for a police station, I fought for four more, uh, four more firefighters to be put on board. 
I went out there and I wasn't for the secession of SAU from the SAU 21. Just like I took on the trash on my own, I took on getting on that committee and by the end I was totally convinced I was wrong. It was right. We should secede. We were paying 40 percent and getting 15 percent of the time. Now we're getting 100 percent of value out of SAU 90 and we're saving money. I'm proud to look back at those things in the past decade that have come to fruition. Right. I'm going to have to ask you to wrap up. I will wrap up. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. And with wrapping up, I would ask for your vote so that now I can take everything I've learned from the Budget Committee and go forward to a policy board in the Board of Selectmen. I ask for your vote. Thank you.